All right. So welcome to Artist Live today. Um, oh, Heather, do you mind just checking for me who is coming up next week? Because I forgot to check and that I want to make sure and put them at the end, make sure I mention them. Um, so welcome to Artist Live today. This is the project that I'll be creating. Oh, sorry about the message. Um, my phone's kind of going crazy right now. This is the project that I'm going to be creating and it is a compilation, kind of like a little mashup here of Artist Live and Our Mixed Media Moods, which is a uh, Facebook group that my friend Jen Ingle and I run. And we, every month on the 20th, release a mood board. And the the mood board, um, it gives us a chance to just kind of work in some mixed media and do some in-depth tutorial videos for our YouTube channels. And then we invite other people to play along. And sometimes we have sponsors and prizes and things like that. And uh, we thought it would be great to partner up with the amazing talent that is at Artist Live. And it has been phenomenal. Heather and Rika and Yasmin and Karen, and they are just super great. So um, today's my day at Artist Live, and it just worked out that well. So this is the mood board. That's my phone. Let's see if I pull it down here. This is the mood board. Oh, and that's fabulous and kind of blurry. But, um, oh, thank you, Olga. Okay, thanks so much, Heather. Um, this is the mood board this month, and it was made by Jen Ingle, and it's very blue and gray and, like, kind of some earthy tones in there, and there's some teals and a little bit of green, and then it has lots of nature elements. There's wood and stars and um, some butterflies and some sticks, and then there's, like, this lovely grid pattern down here, and then this is kind of like alcohol ink. It's so cool and so fun. So my project today is based off of that mood board. And it loses a little bit of its color and intensity in this webcam. You can totally see pictures if you go to Artist Live or Our Mixed Media Moods or even my blog. So like ddkatron.com and you can see all the supplies are listed there and everything. Also in the Artist Live event. So don't forget there's like a bunch of places you can check this stuff out and get all of the required information. Um, except for exactly how to make it which is why I'm here today. So I took the grid, the sort of like little um, tiles from the mood board, and I wanted to do three things, three miniatures. So I really love working in a series. And I picked up, like when I see something that I like, then I pick up a bunch of it just so that I'll have it around for a while. Because some the worst thing to me is to be working on a project and then know that I want something, know exactly what it is, and it be out of stock or out of season or retired for a while. So these alphabet cards are from Prima, and this is what the back looks like, and the back is even lovelier than the front side. But they are the perfect size. They're like little playing card sizes or ATC sized even, and they're such a good base. So I've already gessoed these, but depending on the light, you can kind of see like this was a V, a Y, and a Y because I figured I probably wouldn't need those letters very often. So I've already gessoed these so that you don't have to sit through me gessoing today. And I have some two inch masking tape. So I have all kinds of sizes of masking tape. I love adding it to my projects. Um, it's grungy and it's kind of industrial a little bit. And I have it in all kinds of sizes so that I have variety. And in my work, sometimes I'll lay the different sizes over each other. And it's all very cool. And uh, I just love to have it around. So taking into consideration from the mood board for our mixed media moods, whoops, oh my gosh, <laughs> some of the stuff that Jen picked um, had this kind of cool like earthy undertone to it and I wasn't exactly sure how to achieve that but it looked like it had a little bit of yellow in it. So I decided that I would use the masking tape to achieve that and I know that some of the products I'm going to use later on have a little bit of, hello, thanks for joining. Um, they have a little bit, or not even a little bit, but quite a bit of translucency to them, transparency, so you can actually see other colors through them. So this kind of waxy, almost yellow tinted 
masking tape is going to show through just a little much and, or just a little bit and then alter that color and make a really cool sort of tone like basically what I'm aiming for from that mood board color wise so I'm just taking off strips of my two inch tape as you can see and kind of putting them on my page or on my little cards in different areas and some of them can overlap and they can and they will but they don't have to it's more about just getting like a nice composition not too much white space but not too much masking tape because also I the colors that I'm going to use or the products that I'm going to use to achieve my colors I want to to also be seen so all the white space where those colors are going to land that's where that's going to be I want the colors to be their actual color there all right, one more here. And I actually think that might be okay. If we turn that that way, then it will kind of be, um, it will be like this is the edge and then force our eye in. All right, so now we have masking tape on our cards here. Get some stuff out of the way. And I have some Liquitex clear gesso and some paint brushes and water, and I have powdered charcoal. So this is General's powdered charcoal, and oh, and I wanna say real quick, so I had someone mention recently that um, watching shows like this and YouTube tutorials and videos are awesome, but that not all people or artists or crafters have every product, and that's absolutely true. I don't even have every product. I, I don't. I, and I've been collecting art supplies since I was like five years old. So he and I'm I'll be 30 this year. You know, that's a long time to have to have art supplies, to collect art supplies and to be in art and to be submerged. And I don't have everything. So I always want to give you options and other ways um, to create some of these projects. So if you don't have these little cards, OK, you don't have to buy these little cards. You can cut them out of cardstock that we all have. If you don't have cardstock, you could even use something thicker, like a scrap of cardboard, and then they'll have dimension to them, and that will be cool. But they're just plain card sized. And masking tape, if you don't have masking tape, you probably um, would want excuse me, would want to get some because there's not really anything else out there like masking tape, but you could use washi tape if you have washi tape. And then, um, so clear gesso is clear gesso, but you don't have to use Liquitex brand. It's just the one that I like. You could use Golden or you could use Prima or, you know, you could make your own clear gesso. Um, this powdered charcoal, you don't have to go out and buy this huge tub of powdered charcoal because I am fairly certain this is it's this it's this size or larger um, but you could take a charcoal stick or a charcoal pencil or a willow charcoal and you could rub it on a piece of sandpaper and create your own charcoal powder so when you need it just a few um, and then so it's this is just a container of powdered charcoal and I have my clear gesso and a brush here oh, just a second I need to dry off my brush. Okay, got a brush and my powdered charcoal and my clear gesso. And so here you can see it's just a powder and there's like kind of like little fogs coming up. Um, oh, and my clear gesso is clogged. Yay! Hi, Joe. Hi. Hello, everyone who's come in. Um, it's Dee Dee today. Dee Dee Katrin, how are you, Jill? All right, so just a little bit of gesso there on the side. And Heather, real quick, I don't know if it matters. Um, I know you're trying to post the links, but what I'm seeing says censored. It, I don't see links. Can anybody else confirm what they're seeing while Heather's posting those links to the products? Thanks so much. Um, okay, so I have my charcoal and a paintbrush and my gesso and I have the clear gesso and I have been doing this on a lot of projects because it's just something that I learned recently and I love it. So 
I'm just going to dip my brush in the powdered charcoal a little bit, not a lot because it goes a long ways, and I'm going to start kind of spreading it around. Yes, that's a lot of charcoal. But a little bit goes a long way. Kind of spread that around there. And I'm going to put the lid back on this because if any air gets in there, it just blows out. And I could add like water to this or I could spray fix it. But if I dip into my clear gesso and just kind of like it gets dark really quickly. So I might use my under paper to get some of it off because I don't want these to be completely black. And then I have a tub of water right here. So that's what I'm putting my, my paintbrush into. And I'm going to add some water to this too. And that's the charcoal and the gesso and the water. They sort of get this like watercolory effect to them. And like I said, I don't want it to be too dark because I'm going to come back in in just a moment with something kind of fun here. All right, just a little bit. This is too dark, so I'm going to pull some of that back, and that's really easy to do. All right. And the next product that I'm going to be using, it's they're called brushos. Now, lots of different companies are now making a product like this. Um, what it is is it's a little powder in a little tub, okay? And these ones are called brushos and they're from the United Kingdom, from the UK. My super fabulous London um, art sister, Krista, got these for me actually, but you can find them on Amazon or a couple other places. Or you might have something similar. So um, you might have Ken Oliver's Color Bursts, or you might have um, Magicals by Lindy Stamp Gang, or there's even a couple others that are not just coming to mind right away. But it's a powder pigment. So inside here is a powder, just like that powdered charcoal. And I make sure that I have some sort of wetter areas here. Get some water down. Then when I come in, and I already have, I have a hole poked in the top of my piece here. I'm just going to sprinkle this on. I may need to clear that hole. Let's see, what do I have? There, look at that, look at it go, look at it go! That, okay, so that's my favorite. I love watching it. It just starts, oh, it's so delicious. Okay, and two, like if it's not happening quickly enough, you can take some water to it and you can, or you could spray it. And so then where this charcoal and this uh, brush -o meat then they're going to turn sort of like a gray blue and and it's really fun and you just help it a little bit not a lot you don't want to overwork it because if you overwork it then just the two colors will mix completely and you don't want that we're sort of going for a bit more um like variation and just letting them sort of do their thing almost I want to draw some of that blue over the tape so you can see it gets sort of like a, almost like a green color because the tape is a yellow, has a yellow base. And I'm going to stop there with that part. So I'm going to set my brush out to the side and I would just suggest like, if they do have, if you can see, like a little lid that will come off. but. Almost everybody I know just pokes a little hole in the top so you can sprinkle them. So and I just keep them in their case with all the holes pointed up. And then it's easy for me to know um, that they're safe and not spilling everywhere. And now I'm going to heat this. So I do have a quiet heat gun, but it's a little bit old, so it might be a little loud. Let me heat this dry and permanent, and then we'll move on, okay? And please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask.
All right, so we are almost dry here. Just a couple seconds. All right, and actually, I think that might kind of be it for the heat gun, so that'll be nice, too. All right, so my workspace is a little bit dirtier now. Let me see if I can kind of flip this over real quick to help us out. That'll be a little better. Okay, so now we have these three cards. And they are so cool and so different. And they're they're even so different than the original, which is here. But you still like you can see where those effects came from now in the background. And so that's just powdered charcoal and one color of brusho. But the brushos have all kinds of other colors, so you can totally add other variations and pigments if you'd like. All right. So we have those. And trying to do everything in the right order here. And I have this piece of watercolor paper that I've already cut to size. And I can't exactly remember the size, but I think it's like two and three quarters by seven and seven eighths or something like that. But I cut it, um, well, based on the original, but so that the cards will fit on here. So that they're still, um, they're each individual card, but I have nice spacing and a beautiful background for them to be mounted to because fairly often people ask me like oh when you have a series like what do you do with it well you would you could put it in a frame or mount it on a board and then hang them on your wall or something like that but by putting all the series together on this I can turn them into one sort of small or one sort of larger project uh, this video is recorded so you can definitely go back and catch anything if you if you missed it and I am going to use, I could use a bunch of things to attach this down uh, to my watercolor paper. You know, I could sew it on, I could use gel medium, I could hot glue it, but I'm going to use a Tim Holtz tiny attacher today. And the reason is because it adds a little bit of industrial sort of feel to it, which is very similar. It, it complements the masking tape very nicely I think so I'm gonna start off I didn't check how many staples were in my tiny attacher before I brought it in so I'm just gonna do one on each one for now and then I can go back and fix that if I don't like it Perfect. And then right in the middle of the two. Oh, and I will suggest this. If you're ever doing anything like this, I did the left and the right or the right and the left or flop it around, whatever. But you do the two edges first and you line them up as nice and even as you'd like. And then you put your guy in the middle and you can line him up between these two and it will almost always look even. But if you were to do one on the side and then the middle, you might not have enough room left for your last guy. So, little tip. Just friends helping friends. All right, and I got them all, so I'm gonna just add some X's to some of these. Some cross staples. Oh, and I'm out. Okay, perfect. So glad I did that and made sure they all got in there. So that is just a design element, and I can fix that later when I get more staples. So here's where we're at now. 
beautiful, intense colors. And they look so good with this framework around them that comes from the page off. Hi, Michi. All right, and then the next step is to wrap some twine around it. Now this twine is, hi Kim, thanks everyone for being here and everyone who's popping in. Um, this, yeah, that daylight savings time, that really, I messed us up for sure. <laughs> um, we have a six-year-old, so now all of our, uh, our timing is off, like getting him to school and his sleep schedule, and it's pretty awesome. Thanks so much, <laughs> government. <laughs> um, so this is burlap twine, and I have, it has variation in it, in the color. It, it was like just an off-white, but I have rust dyed it. So I have been rust dyeing a lot of things and, and like big panels of uh, fabric and things like that. But while I'm rust dyeing big panels of stuff, I've been sliding in some like text pages and some fibers and some laces and things like that so that they'll get rust dyed also. And it's super awesome. I can't even lie. Uh, but I'm going to wrap this around the card now. And I want it to wrap around four times. And the reason is because I want to thin I do weed I want to um, weave some pieces in between it so I'm only getting three with this one but I have some more here so I'll show you how easy that is to fix I'm gonna tie this into a knot on the back Cut off my little tail here. I have three, and then I definitely want it to wrap around one more time. And I'm not like super specific on if they overlap or not. That's cool if they do. It actually just kind of adds to, I don't know, like the, the mixed media goodness of it all. I have way too much string to tie with. There we go. I actually kind of have a feeling I'm going to get done a little too early. Maybe I should have gessoed on the page today. <laughs> All right, so tie those into knots. And then I have my four that are stretched across. I, I, I wanted it to cross four times because I'm going to weave. All right. And then my next step, I have this piece of chipboard. This comes from Umwow Studio. And we actually have this deer, this little like deer head, a couple different ways. Um, this one specifically comes from the one that, that Heather is going to link to. It is from a set um, that has a lot of other things in it that are winter themed. So it has Oh, excuse me there. It has some snowflakes and some trees and stuff in it. That is the specific one I'm using. It has this deer head in it. But there are a couple other sizes and variations if you look around the Umwell Studio website. So Umwell Studio is the company that I own. And we do um, chipboard stencils and flare. And I want this to go behind my fancy little head here. And this head is from Resin, or Resin, I do that every time. It's from Relics and Artifacts by Sandra Evertson. And Heather is a part of their team. And a lot of the Relics and Artifacts come with a little, a little eye hook in them. And then that is so that you can add them to jewelry and things like that very easily. And I'm just going to twist and pull nice and slow because I don't want it to break my resin. But I don't want this on there because I am not using it for jewelry. So just very gently, nice and slow, I'm working that hook out. Slow, slow, slow. Oh, you know what? And instead of working it out, it broke off and that's okay too because then I just have this little bit left. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. That works too. All right. So I have my Umwell Studio chipboard. 
And this is um, a Tim Holtz do-it-yourself ink pad. And I just filled it with black soot archival ink, which is one of the newer inks. It's not new anymore, but one of the newer archivals that he did with Ranger. And when I apply this to the chipboard, I am going to scrape it like this. And so that darkens up the chipboard, but also leaves some really nice brown tones in there too. So it's sort of just like a distress but it's archival, so it's permanent there, just like that. So you can see those brown areas peeking through. All right. And for this guy here, and this is not the same face I used. I can warn you that. Not the same one, but similar in size. And I have a Stabilo. Whoops, I did have. I dropped it. Hold on, sorry. All right, I have a Stabilo Marksall pencil and it looks like this and it says Aquarell on it because it's water reactive. It's by Stabilo and I'm gonna use this to just kind of scribble all over my face and get some Stabilo on it. And it doesn't really matter where it goes because I'm going to activate it with water and then the Stabilo is going to seep into all the cracks and crevices and away from the highlights of this little resin piece. And it just makes it grungy and delicious. I love the word delicious because I could just eat it up. It gets so cool, seriously. All right, and my paintbrush and water and as I activate that, it turns into this really cool sort of grungy gray, just even like dirty water almost is what it looks like. All right. And I am going to use the heat gun again real quick. All right, and then now my my resin blank is not white. It's old and grungy and distressed. And the only thing to remember is that it's not permanent. This is a Stabilo and it's water reactive and it will always be water reactive. Okay, and that's gonna position right here. And I have some gel medium for that, golden gel medium. And I'm just going to put some on the back of the head. And position it like this. So here's how I like to position it. I actually like the deer horns and the deer ears to show through. I think it's really... <laughs> adds a lot of character and then just even like a little bit more nature inspired. Okay. And while I have that out, these are some coconut fibers. And I'm going to sort of position them so that most of the edge of the fibers pokes up. You can see here, and it sort of resembles a crown that way. It will get tucked underneath the head, but if all of those sort of edges of the coconut fibers are facing the same way, then it just, it just resembles more of a crown. And I'm using more gel medium, and I'm using a lot of it two. Put that down and put the gel medium or the coconut fibers. And 
And then I'm going to slather the back in quite a bit gel of gel medium. And put that right in the middle. So now by making sure there's like kind of like a gloppy or like thick section of gel medium, then I can guarantee that it's going to go through all the layers and connect everything together. All right. I'm going to give that just a minute to set for a second. Does anybody have any questions? None whatsoever, huh? All right. I'm going to keep moving on then. If you have questions, please just let me know. We certainly, it looks like we have a bit of time to answer them, so I have no problems. Um, all right. So the next step, these, um, I do a lot of things, and some people, they, they ask me actually like fairly frequently, like, how do you do all the things you do? So... I own Umwell Studio, and I also work at a stamp store, a stamp manufacturer called Viva Las Vegas Stamps, and then I also get to design papers for Seven Dot Studio, and it is probably the most fulfilling and rewarding thing ever. I love designing paper and, and paper collections and all the things that go with them. So these are some of the words and texts that I have designed to go along with my paper lines. And I love them. The texts are my favorite part because they really bring all the line together. My paper lines have 12 by 12 paper, six by six paper, stencils, chipboard flare. They have um, stamps, there's always a stamp set. There's die cuts and there's stickers. But these word stickers are like my chance to really tie everything together. So they're always themed. Like this one was lost and found so these word stickers, they are like vintage things and like lost and found ideas, like like little moments, priority, um, like be at peace, photographs, life is good, take notes, from ours to yours, like that kind of stuff, reach for the stars, like file number 4A, you know, important, like stuff that was vintage or old or things like that. Um, this one was from Fortune Teller, and it had like splash in the rain, take a risk, under the stars, like stay wild, moon child, like very gypsy-ish type of things, never settle, gypsy soul, like very gypsy-ish type stuff. This one is from one of the newer lines called Writer's Block, and then the whole thing was like, like, typography and stuff like that. So you must tell stories, um, a fairy tale mind from the desk of final copy, final print, like by definition, like that kind of stuff. So I love these words and I love incorporating these into my art and my mixed media um, art projects and art journaling and whatever. So today we're going to use one and we actually have quite a few to choose from. So on this one, I picked Destiny is Calling, and it seemed very appropriate for this guy. Uh, I don't have Destiny is Calling again, so I get to pick something else, and I don't know what I'm going to pick yet. Um, it, it's sort of like whatever strikes the mood. And also, if you're interested, yes. So uh, actually, when the new lines come out at Umwell Studio, we have them for sale. So always at the beginning, no problem. If you are looking outside of the U.S. for them, you can always contact 7 Dot Studio, and they'll even tell you um, where you can get them, and you can buy directly from 7 Dot Studio also. Oh, excuse me. So check around. Um, but today, this is one of my older ones. I can tell the stickers are, like, starting to pick up from moving it around so much. But <laughs> do you see something on here that you think would be awesome? Yes. Okay. So yeah, if you pre-order, like 
like keep your eye out from at Umwild Studio or for newer lines. Like once we sell through the new lines, we don't reorder them. So if you're looking for something older, yep, you can check check around like N Nanny K Ola and a couple other places. Contact Seven Dot Studio themselves; they can totally help you out. Yeah, um, just breathe would be good for my new piece. Be at peace. Music to my ears. This guy has four ears now, right? Two deer ears and two human ears. Should we do music to my ears? That's kind of funny. The yellow would be a really nice contrast too. So just a whisper, test your limits, create art every day. It's your story, picture perfect. It's your leap to take. That would be cool. It's really inspirational. Do what you love. We could do do what you love. What do you think? Does that look good? I have to wait a second because when I ask you a question, there's a little bit of a delay for replies. So there's one in the green that says question everything. Right there. That might be kind of cool. Any opinion? No? You're kind of telling me to go for it? All right. And I am going to cut a little bit off. Hi, Petra. We are almost done here. I'm so sorry. I think the daylight savings time really messed with people. All right. So then we have do what you love on there. And the last thing here is to weave some sticks into the twine that we wrapped all the way around. So the only thing to remember when it comes to weaving is that every, um, every new line needs to be woven the opposite way. So if I go under this one, I go over the next one, under this one, and over the next one. Then when I bring my second one in, since I went over here, I'm going to go, or since I went under here, I'm going to go over, under, over, under. Okay. Same for the next one. I'm going to go back and repeat what I did on the first stick. I'm going to go under, over, under, and over. All right, like that. And then I'm going to scoot them in a little. There, like that. And then same with this one. Now, just for consistency and continuity's sake, since this one is over, and I'm actually going to start on this end. So this one is under right here. Yes, that's the other one I was trying to remember. Scrapbook Diary sometimes picks it up. Yeah. Since I went under here, I'm going to go, or my goodness, since I went over right here, I'm going to go under here, over, under, over. And then over, under, over, under, and under, over, under, over. All 
All right, and there you have it. And now just wait for all my gel medium to kick into gear and hold everything down. And yeah, it is a little short today, but that's us. And that is a finished product. All right. So today we used Umwow Studio, and we used Seven Dot Studio, and we used Color Craft Brushos, and we used Pieces from Nature, and we used Stabilo, and we used General's Powder Charcoal, and Liquitex Gesso, and Golden Gel Medium, and a Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher, and Suprema Alpha Cards. And that, my sweet friends, is what mixed media is all about. And I hope that you are encouraged to try things out and to mix up your products and to test stuff out because that's the only way you're gonna know how it works is by trying it. All right, so do we have any questions to maybe fill up a couple minutes here? Yes, okay, so Yasmin is next week and um, she is having a giveaway and she, let's see, yes, and the 20th, she's also, here's a little hint, a little tidbits, a secret. She, her project is going to be based off of our next mood board. So that comes out on the 20th. Yasmin is on the 20th. It's going to be a really great show. Please stop by and see us um, at Artist Live right? You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Ustream, on YouTube. Artist Live has a brand new group on Facebook too, where you can share your inspiration if you create projects based on our tutorials. So please come on over, check that out. Um, our Mixed Media Moods is a Facebook group and it's on mine and Jen Ingle's YouTube channels. What else? Um, and me, you can find me, Dee Katrin dash designer on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Look around, find us, get inspiration because there is a lot of really great free tutorials out there and we are always really happy to share with you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm always super honored to be here and to see you guys. All right, so I'll see you in the future. Bye.